Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Infimech TX. This extremely affordable Core XY printer aims to provide high quality 3D prints at blazing fast speeds, all while being packed full of all of the features that the modern Clipper firmware provides. Beginners would love its perfect first layers with automatic nozzle offset and bed leveling, while advanced users have full access to modify the printer to your heart's content. But is the Infimech TX really that easy to get up and running? Let's find out. Before we begin, this TX 3D printer was sent to me for review by Infimech. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you are interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The Infimech TX is a filament-based 3D printer sporting a Core XY design. Core XY printers use two stationary motors with a belt loop that work together to move the hot end in the X and Y axes. Since the motors are mounted on the frame, this makes the hot end very lightweight, enabling insanely fast acceleration of up to 20,000 millimeters per second per second. This, combined with the latest Clipper firmware, gives the TX print speeds of up to 500 millimeters per second. Starting with the hot end, we can remove the magnetic enclosure to expose the all-metal hot end with ceramic heat block and volcano-style nozzle. This allows for print temperature of up to 300 degrees Celsius for more exotic materials like nylon and polycarbonate. Dual cooling fans on the side do an excellent job at cooling the prints, which is needed for print speeds of up to 500 millimeters per second. On top of the hot end is the direct drive extruder, which uses 1.75 millimeter filaments. All of the gears are exposed for easy cleaning, and the clear front panel lets you watch the extruder work. Very helpful when loading and unloading filaments. And we can follow the PTFE tube to the back of the printer, which holds the filament runout detector. Also on the back is the spool holder, which worked well with all of the different types of spools that I tested it with. As we move back around the printer, we can see the full enclosure of the Infimec TX. It has a nice glass door that swings open to give you easy access to the inside. Normally the top is open to allow for better ventilation and airflow, ideal for materials like PLA. However, if you want to print with materials that like a hotter chamber, like ABS or nylon, then you can put on the included lid. The lid has Velcro strips on the front and back, making it easy to take on and off as needed. Moving back inside, we can see that the bed moves up and down on the Z-axis. The bed itself is a magnetic, flexible spring steel PEI bed. Easy to remove from the printer, and a single flex is all that is needed to remove your prints. The screws on the back make for easy alignment of the bed. However, I do wish the screw heads were a little taller. Sometimes I would miss them and have to try again. I had no adhesion issues with the PEI bed. Parts stayed firmly attached while printing, but were easy to remove afterwards. The TX's bed has load cells built in, which enables auto bed leveling and Z offset adjustments. When the printer first starts, it shakes the bed to make sure that the load cells are functioning. Then it will move up until the nozzle pushes against the bed. Then the bed knows exactly where the nozzle is, so you'll get the perfect bottom layer each time. Auto bed leveling works the same way. It probes a series of points all around the bed, detecting the nozzle pressing against the bed. It can then compensate for any warping of the bed as it prints. The bed is connected to two Z-axis motor on the sides, and four support rods. The motors can move independently, so it can correct for any tilt from side to side. The total print area for the TX is 220mm by 220mm by 250mm. I never felt limited by this print size, and I was able to use all that room. There is also an LED light bar on the inside to illuminate the print bed. At the bottom is the power supply, with the power switch and USB ports. It also houses the 64-bit quad-core processor that runs the printer. Finally, we come to the 4.3-inch touchscreen display. The TX runs Native Clipper, an advanced modern firmware that is packed full of features. The touchscreen controls are great, giving you easy access to all of the settings. I especially like the thumbnail previews when selecting a print. If you connect your printer to Wi-Fi or Ethernet using the port on the back, then you can take advantage of the networking capabilities of Clipper. The Fluid UI lets you control the printer from any web browser, on your computer or smartphone. You can also easily send prints wirelessly from your slicer. For all of you that like to hack and modify your printers, you can easily log in to the root user and have full control over what is installed and running on the TX. And let me shout out the awesome community on the Infimec TX subreddit and Discord server. There are some dedicated users that have created some awesome guides to their mods, and they know all of the details of this printer inside and out. The TX can also take advantage of Clipper features like input shaping and pressure advance. The hot end and bed have accelerometers built in. During the calibration process, it'll sweep through a range of frequencies and detect at what frequencies 
frequencies the printers naturally vibrate at. Then it can better control the motors to dampen those frequencies, removing any ghosting or echo artifacts that normally show when the printers change direction. Pressure Advanced helps to minimize oozing, bulging, and shrinkage, and improve surface finish. The Infimec TX arrives almost entirely assembled. It took less than 5 minutes to screw on the door handle, attach the touchscreen, and slide on the spool holder. It doesn't get easier than this. The software side is just as easy. Infimec recommends Orca Slicer. They provide slicer and profiles on the included USB drive. Or you can just download and install the latest version of Orca Slicer, which has the profiles built in. I never had any issues with the provided profiles. They range from fine details with low layer heights, to faster draft modes with thicker layers. Orca Slicer also natively hooks into the TX's Clipper install, letting you send files directly to the printer. And the device tab loads the Fluid UI, so you can manage your printer without ever leaving the slicer. You are not restricted to Orca Slicer, you can use whatever slicer you prefer. If your favorite slicer doesn't support sending to a clipper printer, then you can save the G-code on the included USB drive to print from there. With all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at some example prints. Most of the filament used in this review was provided by my filament sponsor Sunlu. If you are interested in any of Sunlu's high quality filaments, then I'll have links to the colors and material that I use in the description. Thanks Sunlu! The USB drive contained two different versions of the 3D Benchy, a standard speed and a high speed version. The standard speed printed in 44 minutes, while the high speed version printed in only 18 minutes. The standard speed is flawless, the bridging of the cabin is great, and there's very little Benchy hull line to be seen. The high speed version has some rougher edges, with some stringing showing, and the front hull has some defects. However, for printing with up to 500mm per second, it is still an impressive showing. This torture test showed off the strengths of the TX. The first thing I noticed were the towers at the top. While there is stringing on the last one, the rest of the towers are clean and printed the entire way up. Looking at the rest, even the 15 degree overhangs were printed, and the bridging is also very good with only slight drooping at the longest span. Another sample print was this Flexi Rex. It printed in 39 minutes and came out perfect. The bottom layer is consistent thanks to the bed leveling. Upgrading from a 2D Flexi Rex, how about this 3D Flexi T-Rex? It was printed on the 0.08mm layer height ultra fine profile, and man, this looks very close to resin printer levels of quality. It actually managed the 0.08mm layers just fine, I can hardly tell the layer lines. The final included sample was this string art. It showcases the excellent bridging thanks to the dual cooling fans, and then I had to slice my own string art with this spider version. It printed just as well, I love the look of it. To start pushing the boundaries, I printed this Desert Kiss Dice Tower. Even though it was printed with 0.16mm layer heights, it only took 12 hours and 22 minutes to complete, and this print is awesome. The TX handled the overhangs well, and the layers at the top of the skull are very smooth. And I always have to test spiral vase mode, and it worked just fine on the TX. This G-Create rocket printed great, with no ghosting artifacts on the edges of the features thanks to the input shaping, and even the antenna printed with only minor defects. The TX's direct drive extruder allows for printing with flexible materials like TPU. This Benchy was entirely printed with TPU. While the overhangs on the windows and halls aren't perfect, the wall still printed very consistently. There is something satisfying about squishing a 3D Benchy. I only had one slight hiccup during my tests. I was able to confuse the load cells in the bed by starting the filament loading feature, but switching back to the move screen before loading started. Thinking that I had cancelled the loading, I tried to lower the bed, but it wasn't moving. So I pressed home, which caused the bed to move all the way up without detecting that it hit the nozzle. Thankfully, the bed just hit the end of the lead screws, and there was no damage to the printer whatsoever. Lesson learned was to let the loading or unloading of the filament complete before starting other procedures. In conclusion, I am very impressed by the Infimec TX. It made a great first impression with only needing 5 minutes from unboxing to first prints. I love the variety and quality of the included sample prints. Setting up Orca Slicer with the included profiles were easy, and they all resulted in high quality prints. The Core XY design allowed for super fast prints. And the features enabled by the Clipper firmware, like input shaping and pressure advance, maintain that high quality even at those faster speeds. The Infimec TX can be purchased for $329 US dollars at the time of recording. You can bundle the camera, auxiliary fan, and activated carbon filter for $50 more, for a total of $379 US dollars. At the base price of $329, the TX is one of, if not the, least expensive Core XY printers on the market. If you are looking for a fully enclosed printer that has all of the modern features, while still being budget friendly, then the Infimec TX is a printer for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the Infimec TX. What is your favorite feature of the TX? What features do you think it's missing? 
Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering. I have plenty of upcoming reviews and projects that you won't want to miss. And if you are still in the market for a Core XY 3D printer, why not check out my recent review of the Two Trees SK1. It might be the advanced Core XY printer for you. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.